We'll start with the prayers. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Obhunaktu Sahabiryam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navadi Tamastuma Vid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Chapter 3 of Panchadasi Panchakosha Viveka Prakaranam. That is the title of the chapter. The five koshas and atma. That is the viveka we are trying to do. Discrimination between the pure consciousness, I, the pure consciousness, and the five koshas. When we study the scriptures, there are three fundamental roots which are shown in Tathobodha. The three Sharirams is not Atma, but Atma is the substratum of the three Sharirams. The gross body, subtle body, causal body. Then we see that Atma is the substratum for the five koshas, the second path. If you want to study your nature, you can use the three sharirams, the root of three sharirams. If you want to study the Atma, you can analyze, inquire about the five koshas. The third root is the three avastas. You can study your own self in waking, dream, and sleep, for which Mandukya Upanishad is the Pramana. For, taitri, for the Pancha Koshas, Taitri Upanishad is the Pramana. Here we are doing the Pancha Kosha Viveka using the, uh, the Taitri Upanishad mantras. Chapter 3 consists of 43 verses. The first 10 verses discuss what is the five koshas and why we say these five koshas are not me. So that is what we are studying right now. We have finished the first verse. We have started with the second verse. The second verse is the most important verse in this chapter because it is a Pratignya Vakya. It introduces the topic of this chapter. And the topic, it enumerates right in the beginning. So Vidyaranya follows the, the Upanishadic methodology of teaching. Right in the beginning, the Upanishad will say, Sadeva Saumya Midamagre Asid. Sat alone was there. You should know that Sat principle. And then it will go on explaining Tathomasi. So, similarly, here, Swami Vidyaranya enumerates the five koshas. We have done that last week. I will continue where we stopped so that we can complete this second verse today. The second verse says that within the physical sheet, okay, this is the most important chart of the whole chapter. If you understand this chart, Atma is the core. It, the nature of Atma is pure consciousness without the body, without the mind, without the five koshas. So if that is what is Atma, then there is a covering. The coverings are one by one mentioned here. 
The closest to Atma is Ananda Maya Kosha, which is the enjoyership in us. And then there is Vijnana Maya Kosha. Then we have the Mano Maya Kosha. Then Prana Maya Kosha and Anna Maya Kosha. That is when you start from Atma. But when we start from our physical, what we are experiencing today, then we have to start from Annamaya Kosha, the physical sheet first. And then we have to go to Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya. And in this, in this, uh, uh, in these sheets, what is explained us to us is the uh, five koshas and their descriptions. This is the slide where we stopped last week. What is Annamaya Kosha? Annamaya Kosha is made up of the food. It is the sheep covering which is made up of, it's created by the food which we eat. So within this body is the prana, which is the controller of this Andamaya Kosha. So every time we study a Kosha, we should understand what is the controller. So according to the scriptures, the physical sheath is controlled by the pranamaya, which is very evident also. When the prana leaves, the physical body disintegrates. Therefore, we can easily conclude that prana controls and it governs the gross body. And prana is subtler than the gross body. For those who are, you, I mean, most of you have done the Tattva Bodha. We have seen in Tattva Bodha, subtle body consists of 17 parts. The Indriyas, the Pancha Indriyas, Pancha Pranas, then Pancha uh, Karma Indriyas, and then Manaha and Buddhi. So these are the 17 inner subtle organs. So that subtle body controls the gross body. What is pranamaya kosha? Prana means, whenever we say prana, we are talking about inhalation, exhalation. The air which we breathe and the air, and the air which we throw out. So one prana has the power of Inhalation, exhalation, which is called as prana. Apana means excretion, throwing, uh, 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 removing the waste matter. Then prana, apana, samana, vyana, samana means digestion. Vyana means circulation. Udana means throwing out, like sneezing, uh, uh, vomiting, and there is a subtle nature which is explained in Chandogya Upanishad of Udana Shakti. It is also very well explained in the Yoga Shastra, which is the uh, power by which the Jiva, which controls these 17 organs, that leaves the body. So it is this Udana Shakti which throws out the Jiva into the next body. Whatever we do, our all our actions are governed, or all our actions are, are done by the organs of action, Pancha Karma Indriyas. And the chief of that Pancha Karma Indriyas and the Jnana Indriyas is Prana. If we are able to have a good rhythmic, subtle breathing, then we are, have full control on all these five processes. It is the same prana which is in the different parts of the body 
and in each of these parts it has a separate function so the prana is the physiological controlling factor then we come to manomaya kosha prana tabhyantara manaha what does this mean it is subtler than the prana so you are going deeper and deeper within your own nature so within this prana is the mind see we all feel our emotions we feel anger we feel passion we feel uh, goodness in us you know we feel, we feel that we are, we are we are thinkers but that element of thinking feeling the emotions they are subtler than the prana so the mind therefore we say mind governs prana if mind is calm breath is also calm mind in samadhi is the physical when mind is in samadhi they have done experiments with rishis they have found that the physiological functions also get reduced that is why we say the mind is the controlling factor for the prana mind body is maintained by the force of prarabdha karma see whenever we are in the waking state we find ourselves in this state it is not that we all want to be in this state many of us would like to just be in the sleep state or dream state but then we are forced to get up we are forced to get into the dream state we are forced to go into the sleep state that governing principle which controls all the three states for the entire humanity is paramatma that is what is called as ishvara it is called as ishvara srishti and ishvara srishti is governed by one important factor from the jiva and the jiva contributes to that ishvara srishti by way of his karma phalam each one of us we are born to do actions through this body right from the day one till the last day we are just the body is what it is it is a it is a house in which the jiva comes and then performs actions through the jnana indriyas karma indriyas and what is the result of that the result is i get sorrow or happiness which is the phalam which is the fruit of prarabdha karma so mind is of the nature what is mind now if you want to analyze what is the mind in this particular verse vidyaranya tries to give us the entire gamut of the five koshas so that's why we are studying each of these koshas in somewhat of a uh, uh, detail and then when we go to the actual verses after the third verse then we will go into each kosha so the prana uh, sankalpa vikalpa vimarsha atmakaha vimarsha atmakaha means sankalpa vikalpa sankalpa means so for example i want i want to go for a walk your mind is saying yes let's go after one second it will say no 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 it's too i am too tired today i don't want to go again the next second it will say no i should try to because it's healthy for me again the mind will say no no it's going to rain today so this aspect of oscillating nature of the mind is called as the manaha the same instrument is called as manaha and the same instrument is also called as buddhi prana gives kriya shakti the capacity to act jnana shakti capacity to know the air we breathe is the very important element in our body and this mind has got the shakti 
to know things. Whenever I use my sense organs, I can know the world. Then I can have the desire and I will act. So this prana that controls the annamaya, manomaya controls the prana and it is called as purnaha, naisha purnaha. Purnaha means it is the inner controller. It is filled with, the prana is filled with the mind. Similarly, mind is filled with the intellect. Intellect is filled with the Anandamaya Kosha. So, if you look at our life, the lineage of Vyavahara interactions is, first we come to know I am. We have the knowledge about the I notion in this body. Janati is the first thing which happens. The moment you get up in the morning, what happens? I know myself. First notion, the first thought is knowledge about myself. Then what happens? Desire comes. I have to do this, I have to do that. Then desire, ichati. And the last is yatate, action. Kosha means it covers and it protects. For example, if you have a sword and you have a covering on top of a sword, that means that covering the sheath which covers the sword or a knife, it protects the knife or the sword. It covers the, it wheels. You can't see the, the sword, it covers it. So similarly, each, whenever we say kosha, it means that it is a, it, it covers the nature of something which is inside that. Suppose the mind is thinking and you are identified with the mind. Then what happens? You are, you are not conscious of your body. You are not conscious of your breathing because your identification is with the mind. It happens many times. While you're walking, while you're, uh, uh, while you're sitting in meditation, your mind is dwelling on something which is very important. At that time, you're not conscious of your body. So identification is an extremely important factor which is discussed in Adhyasa Bhashya, which we are doing on Saturdays. It's a very important concept. Just coming back to this, the next kosha we are going to study is Vigyana Mai Kosha. Inside the mind is the karta, the doer. So whenever there is an I notion, I am doing something, that, that doership is in Vigyana Mai Kosha. It is not in the Mano Mai Kosha. In many texts, they say in Vijnana Maya Kosha consists of both enjoyership and doership. In this case, Vidyaranya makes a slight difference between the doership and enjoyership. Especially in chapter 3, he says that Karta, the doer, is in Vijnana Maya and the enjoyer is in the Ananda Maya. In some texts, you might find in Tathobhaga and other places, you might find doer, enjoyer is in the, in the buddhi. So, Vijnana Maya Kosha, what is this Vijnana Maya Kosha? This is a very important Kosha because this Kosha, this is like a mirror. We have a, a very unique property in a mirror. The mirror can reflect our face. So similarly, this kosha is so subtle and so of a nature in which the self, which is the pure consciousness, it reflects on the buddhi. This is the nature, like the heart is pumping the blood. This kosha in us, 
can reflect the power which is the central unique power of the whole cosmos which is called as atma which is called as satchit ananda atma that power which can exist independently that is our goal to reach that power can get reflected in the buddhi and this is exactly what happens when we wake up the moment we wake up this buddhi the mind gets the power it gets empowered to know the mind the sense organs and through the sense organs we know the world so whenever we have the self self here always remember means sat chit ananda what this sat chit ananda we will study a little later but it is for for those of you who are new coming into panchadasi you should understand sachidananda is described right in the tathoboda itself satyam jnanam anantam that is the way we describe the pure self so that pure self is reflected and that reflection is called as chit abhasa without chit abhasa there is no life in this body the mind may be there but if you don't have chit abhasa you cannot that the mind plus chit abhasa is called as the jiva so you can understand vigyanamaya kosha in vigyanamaya kosha there are two things one is the reflection of the self which is called as chit abhasa what does it contribute it contributes the notion i am that is called as the presence see in meditation we are trying to knock off all the koshas and remain with this i am and that is the chit abhasa that is the reflection but in the buddhi there is aham vritti vritti means it is a thought a modification whenever there is a modification of a thought it has to be cognized by the reflection of consciousness and that i which cognizes the self the reflection of the pure consciousness is called as the ego i the individual i all of us are individuals whenever we are experiencing the waking state we have our own individuality our individuality starts with this i notion it is a reflection plus a vritti which is called as the vigyanamaya kosha and it is characterized by selfhood i am the moment you say i am then you have i am the doer doer means what i start using the jnana indriyas and karma indriyas but do you exist without the i am notion is a big question that is what is the inquiry we have to do we all exist without this i am notion the last point we can reach in, when through meditation is this i am but the final leap is you have to drop this i am which is a reflection and be with one pure atma and that is jumping the pole vault you no know? you are throwing the pole vault and then reaching the supreme bliss which is atma so drawn in the self so what is manaha manaha is the oscillating nature many people seekers have this doubt 
what is mind what is intellect it is very clear here mind is after doing this third chapter you should never have a confusion what is the mind what is the intellect what is the prana what is the annamaya kosha very clear what is the doership what is the enjoyership all should be very clear because all this will help us to know our real nature so sankalpa vikalpa manaha oscillating i have already explained this and what is buddhi buddhi is determination i will get up at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the morning i put on the alarm the moment the alarm rings i get up because you are using your buddhi you are not using your mind if you are using a mind then it will say oh can i sleep another 10 minutes you are identified with the mind but if you are saying i'll get up right now jump out of the bed then you are using your intellect there is clarity there is decisiveness therefore the definition of buddhi is nischayatmika two words you should remember sankalpa vikalpa manaha nischayatmika nischayatmika buddhi this buddhi holds the self and becomes the karta buddhi by itself is only a vritti it is only a it is only a notion but it that notion has got the reflection of the consciousness so drawn in the self claims the doership inward it is not outward it is inside doership implies identification with the instrument through the senses mind and body so this karta means the i notion which uses the organs of action it uses the buddhi it uses the organs of knowledge ananda mai kosha this is the last kosha like i said before ananda mai kosha is the bhokta in us and the five koshas bhokta means enjoyer we are going to study a little bit in detail this enjoyership and the five koshas are put together it is called as a cave we should know the difference between the pure i and the ego i this is also not so easily understood by the seekers especially if you are new you find it difficult because this is a subtle subject it's a very very subtle subject you are going beyond the buddhi which you can't see by your physical eyes you only can draw an inference that you have a buddhi and what is the difference between buddhi and what lies beyond the buddhi is this chart pure eye is the consciousness which lies beyond the buddhi beyond the enjoyership and it is real real means it exists in three periods of time it doesn't change at all so many a times we say in order to realize our nature we should understand the nature of atma many people miss this they they equate because they have never experienced something which is always there there is only one thing which is always there and that is this pure atma it is not the pramata which is with the body it is beyond the body mind intellect the nature is called as parampurna sat chit ananda shuddha atma 
and it is not an illusion. Illusion is always a function of the buddhi. You have to use your buddhi to project an illusion. But the substratum of this buddhi is this pure consciousness. This is the object of knowledge. It is the consciousness. And this is the subject matter in all the Upanishads. The ego I is called as illusion. And it is the, what we say is it is unreal, it is mithya. Mithya means what? It can be experienced, but it is not permanent. Normally, in, in Atma Voda and, uh, and other places, they give the example of the sun and its reflection. The reflection is called as Shidabhasa, which is apparently in nature. It is only a name and form at the transactional level. All of us right now are in the transactional level. So all of us right now are the Chidabhasa. But can Chidabhasa exist without the Chit? No. I, the Chit, am also there. I, the Chidabhasa, also am there. The Chidabhasa is together with the body. And because it is together with the body, I experience the entire world. Same thing happens in the dream also. There what happens, I don't get attached to the sense organs. Only my buddhi I use, that is the dream. And when I become tired, I drop the buddhi also. Then what happens, I am in the state of ignorance, which is called as the sleep state. So the, when you talk about the reflected Chidabhasa, it is an illusion. It is called as Jivatma. It comes and goes. It has a temporary existence for a few decades. And then it again, again takes another body. The body shines when the mind shines. Shines means what? Knows. When the mind is there shining, it knows the body. When the mind is not shining in the sleep state, it doesn't know the body. Can you see the difference? You must be very careful to analyze this. What is happening to all of us in the sleep state, in the dream state, and in the waking state? Therefore, this Chidabhasa is an object of knowledge. Okay, so this is how we talk about Chidabhasa. Now, what is Chit now? Chit is always there. It is truth. That is why we call it Satyam. And it is what it enables the illusion. Shuddhatma, this is what our meditation is going to be today. That's why I picked up this meditation from Atma Voda. We'll see that. So it is Satchidananda. It is unborn. See, this is the revelation of the Upanishads. There is something in this world which is the pure consciousness. It is the revealing factor of this body. It is the revealing factor of the mind. And ultimately, it reveals the entire cosmos. It is called as Purushottama or Paramatma. It is intrinsic existence, pure awareness, pure amness, without the media. What is the media? Media is the body, mind, and the world. Body and mind is called as upati. It is an instrument. So this is an ever-shining self, and it is what we are supposed to realize through our study of Upanishads and the Panchadasi third chapter. Now, in the cave of Atma, all the five koshas are abhyantara. It's connected. It is inside 
and also there is a connection between atma and the five koshas so in what we need to understand is what lies in the in each kosha and what is the governing factor the governing factor is a subtler factor vigyanamaya kosha is characterized by the i notion and that i notion is what is called as chidabasa plus mind the buddhi it governs the manaha vigyanamaya kosha is higher controller subtler to control the chanchala atmakam manaha manaha is always with doubt i doubt everything in the world am i good am i bad is this person good is this person bad is all only chanchalam of your mind vrittis throughout the day we are facing our mind and we are facing using our buddhi that is what is life why is this karta and bhokta divided that i i will try to explain now i thought connects with the the senses therefore perception takes place i saw uh, the i thought connects with the organs of uh, action so you become a doer of action using the leg you say i run using the hands you say i grasp i taste all this is ahamkara i so i thought with the sense organs and the this thing and the organs of uh, uh, and the organs of action and the mind together is the jiva the i thought is a only a reflection of the consciousness in the buddhi now it identifies with the senses therefore there is what is called as adhyasa all our activities throughout our life in the waking state is with adhyasa right from day 1 till end it is all adhyasa whole nature if you want to understand the atma this is how you have to understand that is why adhyasa bhashyam is very very important and this topic is very very deeply discussed in the adhyasa bhashyam for those who are attending the saturday sessions you will understand how deep it is when we finish the 16 sections in the adhyasa bhashyam so i thought has got adhyasa it is a doer it is an enjoyer when it is with the buddhi we call it vigyanamaya kosha as a doer principle the same i thought when it is an enjoyer suppose you say i am a bhokta i have enjoyed a good lunch or a good dinner which is that i it is different than that doer i i enjoyed a good meal this rasgulla was tasting good that is called as enjoyership and that enjoyership belongs to another kosha which is called as anandamaya kosha for example the eyes are enjoying beautiful scenery or a nice movie so which aspect is which aspect of the i it is the enjoyership anandamaya kosha which is involved now this anandamaya kosha now we are studying the anandamaya kosha the anandamaya kosha has got three vrittis three types of thoughts and they are all called as sukha vrittis which are generated in the mind this is what the taittiriya upanishad reveals in the taittiriya upanishad they say that anandamaya kosha has got three vrittis and these three vrittis are different in nature 
they are called all of them are sukha vrittis ananda mind vrittis but they are different than the mind and intellect it is not the mind and intellect for example you have a good sleep so it is the ananda maya kosha which was working it is not the buddhi it is not the manaha which was working it is the ananda maya kosha priya what is the difference between the three vrittis priya means that is a term is a is a technical term what is the definition of priya ishta vastu darshana janya sukham ishta vastu means what likable objects darshana means what see just by seeing or perceiving it the joy born out of perception of a liked object for example ice cream you see an ice you go to ice cream bar and you see ice cream there that visual ice cream the joy you get of seeing that is called as priya happiness born out of seeing hearing tasting smelling touching ishta vastu darshana janya sukham in the bhagavad gita in the 14th verse of second chapter lord krishna says matra sparsha astu kaunteya shitoshna sukhadakkara agama paino nityah tam shikshva swabharata very very important verse of the bhagavad gita this contact of the sense objects with the sense organs is fleeting it has a beginning it has an end therefore our joy is also fleeting remember this revelation of the truth in the bhagavad gita and the upanishads the priya vritti does not remain long but all of us want that priya vritti to remain long the joyful nature i want to have that joy throughout my life morning to evening at least for one hour at least for 20 minutes but it doesn't remain why because of this verse matra sparsha astu kaunteya the contact of the sense organs with the sense objects which is this whole cosmos all our transaction is explained in this verse throughout our life and what we need out of the all our contact is only joy we are not looking at anything else perceiving is just there you know the your eyes are open but it will start perceiving objects in the world ishwara srishti but we are all want the sukham out of it but the sukham is not permanent the only sukham which is permanent in the universe is atma sukham which is the swarupa it is the inner joy which exists then the second one is called as moda 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 means the definition of moda is ishta vastu labha janya sukham like the object is now owned and possessed ice cream is in your hand now it is no longer in the shop i can it's not i am doing window shopping now we, i am holding it in my hand that joy is called as moda suppose you are expecting your son coming from new york and he comes and you see him in the in the lounge in the airport lounge very far away it is called as priya that sun comes and you can hug the sun that is called as moda it is near you you are you, you are it is very very close what is pramoda pramoda is ishta vastu anubhava janya sukham now ice cream is not being held in your hand it is inside your mouth you have hugged your sun you are become one with that joy that no longer the chanchalam of the uh, thought is there where is my son where is my son is he come i say i can i see him can i see him no he is not that he is not this 
you have become one. That joy is called as Pramod. See, the rishis have found this nature of joy. And Taitri Upanishad is a brilliant analysis of joy which is there, not only in this world, as Priya, Moda and Pramoda, it is, it describes the joy in the, in the seven lokas. All the upper lokas, what is the joy one experiences? There's gradation in them. If you go to Taitri Upanishad, you can see, you can understand that joy. So for three thoughts which are oscillating vrittis of the mind, they are described as Priya, Moda and Pramoda. When the mind is focused, the mind quietens down. It is not oscillating. Priya, Moda and Pramoda are Bhava Vrittis. Bhava Vritti means you can feel it. All of us can experience this. The pleasure thoughts are more deeper than concentrated thoughts of the intellect. More deeper. Suppose you're focusing on planning your trip. It is, it is a deep subject or you're trying to analyze a particular uh, a problem of a patient. If you're a doctor, if you're analyzing, it is a concentrated thought of a particular patient. This is different. It's a focused thought is different than the Anandamaya Kosha. So there is a difference in the vrittis which we have in the mind. When the ice cream is there in the mouth, what happens is all other thoughts go away. So the joy which you find, feel is, oh, it is almost close and you get almost very close to the reflection of that consciousness. It is called Ananda Abhasa. It is not the real happiness. It is a reflected joy which you experience. Nidra in sleep, if you look at sleep positively, we say, I had a good sleep. I had a blissful sleep. That is putting sleep in a positive way. It is a part of the Ananda Maya Kosha, where you get reflection of Ananda in the blissful nature of sleep. Sleep can also be looked negatively. When you say, I had ignorance. Abhava Vritti. I didn't know anything. This is seeing the sleep, same sleep condition in a negative way. It has no object at all. It is tamasic in nature. Nobody can say, I did not experience anything or I enjoyed the blissful state. If we can't recall the next day. Suppose today I'm not able to recall in the waking state what happened in my sleep state. You will not be able to say that I experienced so-and-so thing. So what the Upanishad says, if you are able to recall today, there must have been a Sakshi of the sleep state, which was there and which is continued to exist even today in the waking state. You can't see it, but it is there. So this Ahankara I continues in the sleep state. It never goes out. It is there in the waking state as the waker. It is there in the dream state as the dreamer and in the sleep state as the sleeper. But all these three together is called as Ahamkara I. Waker plus dreamer plus sleeper. If you want to use one term, you call it as ego I. And 
there is a consciousness principle which is a seer of this ego. The seer of the deep sleep state, the blissful thought which you have, there is an experiencer, there is a consciousness which experiences that. That is the ultimate art. Everybody experiences the same Ananda Mayabritti uniformly because the substratum is Atma, which is getting reflected. So when you experience sleep, if you don't have much of a disturbance, your deep sleep state and my deep sleep state or your anybody else's deep sleep state is the same, is the same. It's the same reflection of Atma in that I thought. The Taitriya Upanishad, I told you, is the source for this Priya, Moda and Pramoda. See here, you can see Priya, Moda, Pramoda. So in this verse of the second chapter, the fifth section, you can understand the definition of Anandamaya Kosha, where you have three types of vrittis describing them. So Priya, Moda and Pramoda is experienced where in the self. And the same self is also called as Brahman. Brahman is the substratum of the entire cosmos. It is Whenever we say Sakshi, it is with reference to the world which a jiva enjoys. So individually, we say it is Sakshi. For the whole cosmos, we say it is Brahman. In Vijnana Kosha, reflection of Atma becomes the sentiency, the knowingness, the knowledge. This is the highest. Knowledge is the highest aspect of a jiva. In the Adhyasa Bhashyam also on Saturday, you will realize this when we do, uh, when we do uh, uh, the section 15, six, uh, four, uh, 12, 13 sections, it will come the same thing. Knowledge is a function of this pure consciousness. There is no other way to describe knowledge. You try describing what is knowledge, you can't. You, it's, it's something which words cannot describe. All you can say is consciousness or sentiency. Now that sentiency is distributed to the prana, senses, body, through the Vijnanamaya Kosha. Anandamaya Kosha is a reflection of this Atma Ananda, and whenever it reflects, we call it experiential happiness. Suppose you experience joy, priya, moda, pramoda in our daily life, then it is experiential. Non-experiential ananda is the pure satchidananda, atma ananda, and that is knowledge. It is just revealed, it is self-luminous consciousness. We use the word maya. Generally, we use the word maya for full. It's full of prachura, density of happiness, vrittis. So, Ananda Kosha is the enjoyer of the three vrittis. And it is beyond the Vijnanamaya Kosha. See how deeply this Anandamaya Kosha, in many texts, we don't do such depth of Anandamaya Kosha, the three vrittis of Anandamaya Kosha, and so on. So, so far, what we have seen is the Pranamaya, it is governing the body, Annamaya. Manomaya governs the Pranamaya. Vijnanamaya governs the Manomaya. Anandamaya governs the Vijnanamaya. 
Atma is the interior most. Without Atma, there is no cosmos. There is no I thought. There is no, if there is no I thought, there will be no Pramanam and Prameya Vyavahara. Guha, Guhati Sambarane. That is the definition of Guha. What it means is it hides partially, but not fully. Because you can enter a cave and light a matchstick. When light of knowledge is thrown in the cave, you can see the five koshas clearly. That knowledge which you light up in the cave of the five koshas is the knowledge of Atma. Everywhere you have to take the light of Atma and reveal the kosha. Reveal the controller and the controlled. And then you realize what is that light? It is the same light which we saw in the 10th chapter of the uh, uh, Panchadasi. That light which, ex which, uh, which, uh, which can ex uh, illumine the absence as well as the presence of this entire world is the light of Atma. Why each kosha is not Atma, we will see. But what we have to understand, remember about the cave is four points. Number one, it covers, sambarane. Number two, it is not empty. There is Atma inside. The number third point about a cave is you can go inside, have an entry possible. And lastly, inside a cave, you can take the light of knowledge and see what is inside. So kosha is a very, very technical term with all these four points. It is an inner, which is, inner is controller of the outer. Prana controls the physical body. And prana is subtler. So, uh, in deep sleep, there is no objects, but still ananda is experienced. Ananda is a bhava pratyaya. Bhava means you can experience it. Now, ananda can also have something, you also have something called as samanya ananda. Samanya ananda means it is the atma ananda. In atma ananda, there is no ups and downs. Whereas the experiential ananda is, there are three vrittis, priya, moda, kamo. Okay. What is atma? It is beyond the three vrittis of ananda. That is what is called as, it is beyond the bhava rupam and abhava rupam. Abhava rupam is the ignorance aspect. Whereas bhava rupam is this priya, moda and pramoda. With all this analysis, you would see there is a difference between bhokta and tarta. One enjoys, in each of these koshas, you can enjoy, for example, in annamaya kosha, you can enjoy food. Vigyanamaya kosha, you can enjoy subtler thinking processes of Vedanta. Manomaya kosha, you can experience the feeling of love. So there is enjoyment possible in other koshas. It is, this Priya Moda Pramoda can be enjoyed in all the koshas. So emotions belongs to the Manomaya Kosha, the doership belongs to the Vijnanamaya, the enjoyership belongs to the Anandamaya. Only by identification with these vrittis, thoughts, 
one becomes a doer, enjoyer, samsari. That is the second verse which gives you a beautiful description of the entire five koshas. And what we will be studying throughout the text. With this, I will close for today. Now, I am traveling from the 16th of March till the 1st of April. So from next week, there will be no classes for the Wednesday class, we will be missing three sessions, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. So three sessions will miss, but you have the notes with you. You can go through the notes and you can revise the entire chapter three. You can have your meditation sessions on all the, on all the Wednesdays. Spend time revising chapter 10 and also study the notes of chapter 3, then it will be easy for you to understand the whole chapter. So chapter 3 is not a difficult chapter. It is fairly easy because it is only describing what we are, in, what we are experiencing in the world. So 16, 23rd and 30th, there are three sessions which will not be there. Our next Wednesday session will be on the 6th of April. And for the Saturday session, for those who are attending the Saturday session also, we have the session this Saturday on the 12th. After that, there will be no sessions till the end of March. That means for Saturday group, we will not have two sessions, 19 and 26. And I will be back on the first, so we'll have a Saturday. Whenever I am returning back on the first, I'll be having a session on the first evening itself. So Saturday, we'll miss only two sessions after the coming Saturday. So with that, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me then. Or Namada, or Namidam, or Nat, or Namudachade, or Nasye, or Namathaye, or Nameva Vasishade, Om Shanti, Shanti. Okay, a couple of questions are there. Uh, Bart is asking a question. Uh, Chidabhasa is a reflection of Atma and the mind. What is the mind in this definition? Mind is a vritti. Vritti means thought, the I notion. And Chidabhasa is a reflection of Atma in this I thought. So this is the I, I thought, there is a thought. And Chit Abhasa means it's a consciousness, the light. It is like a light which is getting reflected in the I thought. If it is Manaha, then it implies that Mano Mayakosha is included in Vijnana Mayakosha. Is that the case? Okay. Yes, you're right. Mano Mayakosha and Vijnana Mayakosha are very much close to each other. There is, you can't really differentiate them much. But the way you can differentiate Mano Mayakosha is whenever your mind is unsteady, oscillating, imagine, you remember, it is the mind. Suppose the mind is not oscillating, you know that it is Vijnana Maya Kosha. It is the, it is the determined. It is, suppose your mind is not at all wavering throughout the session. 
in the class, your mind is not going here and there. You're attentive. That means you are, your buddhi is completely focused on the talk. You haven't got a single thought of anything else except this talk. So the buddhi is this, this differentiation between buddhi and mind will help you a lot in your transactional field. It, it, it will help you a lot because many people, they get confused. I don't know who I am. I don't know what is this mind. I don't know uh, my emotions. I don't know, suddenly I become angry. So all this is a function of the one which is identifier. I am the identifier I thought. This is a very important principle you should understand. If you understand the identification principle, you have understood the entire Adhyasa Bhashyam. Adhyasa Bhashyam, the 16 sections, and this Panchakosha is very much related because it is the same, you should look at, I can be without identifying. That you should remember first. Without identification, who is existing? That is Atma. Because we all have this experience. In the sleep state, we are there. I am not identified with the body. I am not identified with the mind. I exist. The non-identified I is the Sakshi. No, it, and then you apply all the 10 principles, features which I gave from the Tathavoda. Everything will apply to that pure consciousness. And then from the non ident then what happens is, then you start identifying. The identification is first with the knower in this body. Janati, Ichati, Yatati. Always remember three words. I know something, I desire because I know, and because I desire, I act. But who is behind, who is behind this knower? That is a question, that is the art. That reflection of pure consciousness becomes the knower in the Vijnanamaya Kosha. That reflection becomes the doer. That reflection becomes the enjoyer. This is the way you should understand and all this doer, enjoyer is adhyasa, is superimposition. Who am I without the superimposition is the pure consciousness. And the pure consciousness cannot be described by words. It cannot be thought by the mind because it is the source of the mind. It is a source of the walk, the speech. It is a source. The ultimate source of the entire creation is this pure consciousness, non-identified I. Then you will understand everything very clearly. Mind you will understand, the Anandamaya Kosha also you will start understanding. And whenever you are not, then you will also understand the Atma also very easily. When I am not identifying who am I, I am this pure light. Okay, uh, I think you have been unmuted. You you have a question, uh, uh, Bart? Uh, am I clear, Bart? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, right. Um, yes, you you mentioned that in the Shishuti, in the in the. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. In the okay. Sushuti, in the deep sleep, yes. Yeah, you, you said that the, the I notion is still there. 
Yes. But uh, in deep in deep sleep, the subject object relationship uh, dissolves, of course. Correct. That I I notion that I notion is not the mind and the intellect, vritti. That I notion is the causal sharira vritti. There is yeah, a difference. Yeah, 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 See, there is a yeah, difference between yeah. the subtle body vritti and the causal body vritti. Yeah. Uh, so you should differentiate that. And the causal uh, uh, vritti I uh, is the ignorance. I don't know anything. That is why it is, it is, we are going to study this in the Saturday class. In the Saturday session, what happens? How do I differentiate? Just to give you an example, that sleep state what I am experiencing is a vritti of the nature of ignorance, which is the wheeling nature of the Maya Shakti. Wheeling, you know, it covers the nature of Atma. Atma is still illuminating that. It is illuminating that, that nature. It's like the moon during the eclipse. During the moon also, you know that there is a sun there, you know, but you can't see it. But you know it exists. Yes, but, but in deep sleep, in Shishupti, there are uh, the, which is a state of causal ignorance and, yes. and, and differentiated ignorance. Yes. So we, we can say either either uh, uh, so there are, there are we can describe there are two objects which is bliss and ignorance. Yes, and there are in, two. You wait, can... wait, 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 wait. In retrospective, so yeah. so when when we get out of Shishupti, when we are in the waking state and we look back at the sleep the, at Shishupti at the deep sleep state, there is the experience of two objects. Which is which? Which are I know nothing, which is uh, which is uh, ignorance. And the second object is uh, I was in deep peace. I had peace, which is the object of bliss. Uh, so, um, so those, yeah, okay. So, yeah, no. So my question is, yeah, yeah, yeah no, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, good. I'm glad you have understood it. Thank you. Anybody else has a question? Yeah, yeah, Chandra. No, uh, is it possible to realize uh, for the three states during, uh, if you know the three states very well, is it able to have realization from that? Uh, in deep sleep, you cannot realize, but you can realize it in the waking state. In the you see, waking what, state. what really happens is, the moment you are aware of Atma, it is the substratum of all the three states. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You see, of the waking state also, it is a substratum. It is a substratum also of the sleep, uh, dream state. Okay. It is a substratum also of the sleep state. Okay. So it is only in the waking state you can realize yourself. But that self which you realize in the waking state is the substratum for all the three states. Oh. That is how you should understand. Okay, okay. So, so in this case, is it is it is simpler to realize the three states or the five koshas? No, you see, you like I said, in the dream state, you cannot realize. Okay, are we are we is know it, those, it, the, is it subtractive? We know we. Yeah, it, but it, uh, hypothetically, you can imagine that. You yes, say, you're right. You see, it is, your question is good and right because, see, uh, many a times the one thing which we, uh, which we or the Upanishads declare is, what is the light in which you see the dream? Wow. That answers to that question is this Atma. Ah, right. And this is not the question you're asking in dream, you're asking in the waking state. Oh, yeah, right, right. You see, you are still in the waking state. All knowledge takes place in the waking state. In the waking state, your mind is imagining or trying to bring that picture of the dream. And you are trying to say, I was there. As the light which was illumining that dream. Because there was no sunlight. Yeah. There was no other uh, light of the fire or the lightning or uh, any light. There was no other light. This is a direct experience of the Atma, the light of Atma using the dream state. 
Similarly, we can use the sleep state. Yes. Who was the witness of the sleep state? Which was the experience of I knew nothing? That is the negative way of the sleep state. I was in a blissful state in the sleep. I was at complete rest. And at that time, who was experiencer? There was some Sakshi. Yeah. So again, we can use the sleep state, but not in the sleep state because that sleep state, you cannot do anything. It is an ignorant state. It is tamasic. You're not able to fathom the time. Yeah, yeah, you can't. But you can use the sleep state and the, big, and the, and the dream state. <laughs> dream state. And this knowledge is coming to you from where? It is coming to you from the Veda. Oh, okay. The Veda is telling you, it is not you're using any uh, physics knowledge or chemistry knowledge. It is the Veda's knowledge about the dream state, about the uh, waking state, about the dream state and the sleep state. And then you are trying to say, there is a common thing in all these states, that pure common thing, which is not identified with the dreamer body, not identified with the sleeper body, yeah. it must be the one which is there in the waking also without the identification in the waking body. And that is my nature. Okay. This is what Adhyasa Vashyam tells you in the end. It tells you very clearly, who am I without identifying with a body and mind? So there you can easily see that is why I, 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 I love this Adhyasa Vashyam so much. It reveals my nature uh, so easy, so perfectly. Then all my doubts get cleared. It's my knowledge actually. Yeah? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, Jacqueline? Yes, Mr. Shaker. Uh, earlier on this session, you were talking about Enjoyer and doer. Enjoyer and doer, uh, it is just a layer. However, it is, it, 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 is, it is the mind that is the enjoyer and the doer. And for the Atma, it will never have an enjoyer and doer. And it will just illuminate uh, the human to be enjoyer and a doer. Am I right to say that? Okay. You are right. You, uh, you, your understanding is fairly good. Good and it is right. What we are doing is we are going into the layer at the top, layer below, and the lowest layer. Okay? There are three layers in the mind. You know, they say this conscious mind, unconscious mind, subconscious mind. You say all that, right? Yeah. So similarly, what you should understand is, whenever I have emotions, that is at a slightly gross level. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. can feel my emotions. I was angry. I was sad. I was happy. I was uh, compassionate with my uh, friend. Uh, so these are all emotions at a higher level. And that is ego. Is the, that is the feeler. That is the mind. Okay. It is the same instrument. It is the same one instrument which gets divided as the mind, the feeler of emotions. Then the, it is the same mind which is the doer. Okay. See, suppose you say, I am now... Uh, See, you cannot, okay, this comes in Adhyasa Vashyam, but I'm explaining to you here. Whenever, you see, there cannot be a user of the eyes. There cannot, you cannot, the eyes cannot function without a knower behind the eyes. Because there is a, that is what we call it as a knower or pramata. But without pramata, the pramanam and prameyam, pramanam means the eye instrument, and prameyam means the, eye, the sense object. You know, suppose you have eyes, 
Yeah. And you have the sense objects, the form and color. Yeah. You, this eyes cannot see the form and color without a knower. Yeah, okay. The knower is very important. I, the eye, the knower, the pramata is very important. But which is, is what? That ego. Hmm. Without the ego eye, it cannot, the eyes cannot operate with the sense objects. And what is this ego eye? This ego eye is a reflection. It is a reflection of that pure consciousness. Okay. Okay, that is why we say pramata, pramanam, prameyam. It is a triputi, which is what is doing all the transactions. Okay. Okay, now coming back to your question, you see what you should understand is the enjoyer is the same mind, but it is a sukshma vritti. Sukshma vritti means it's a very, very subtlest form of the thought. Ah. Okay, that is the enjoyership. That means I enjoy an ice cream, I enjoy a show. Whenever that enjoyership is there in the mind, it is in the form of a thought. That is the subtlest thought. And that thought has got three types. Priya, Moda, Pramoda. Okay? One, okay. two, three. Which I explained what is this one, two, three was. Okay. Now, a slightly grosser is the doership. Enjoyership is in the Ananda Maya Kosha. Okay. The doership is in the Vigyana Maya Kosha, which is slightly grosser compared to Ananda Maya Kosha. Okay. And in the Vigyana Maya Kosha is the I notion, the ego I comes, and then that is where the doership is born. Okay. Without this I notion in the uh, intellect, the jiva is not at all there. Okay. Then comes the mind. See, so you, uh, the, the subtlest is the enjoyer, which is the Ananda Maya Kosha, which is what Vidyaranya is saying in this book. He says the subtlest thought is the Ananda Maya Kosha. Yeah, okay. Then comes the Vigyana Maya Kosha, where you say, I am the doer. I am the one who... Now, the doer is the one who is employing the sense organs. Hmm, Okay. Eyes are being employed by the I notion. You see, many times we don't understand what is this I notion? What is this I notion? You know, every time we, we talk about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what is this I notion? Yeah. This I notion is what, if you, if I, if you understand uh, this aspect, eyes can, and the uh, form and color, they exist. Suppose I close my eyes yeah. and the form and color I cannot see. But it still exists. They exist. But then the knower is important. Okay. The knower, uh, that is I notion. That is the ego I. Hmm. So unless a knower is there, the knower I, this is the I notion. There is some something in this body which is saying I, 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 it is throughout our life. This I doesn't change from birth till death. Whereas yeah. all other thoughts are changing. Seeing, hearing is changing. Tasting is changing. But who is the I which is seeing or hearing? It is the same I notion. Changes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, it, it has to be, yeah, okay. Yes, and that I is a reflection. It is a ref It is not, it doesn't exist of its own because in the sleep state, I don't see this I. Hmm. Okay, I will and go and comprehend more. Okay, this appreciate. That's why in the Adhyasa Bhashim, in the Saturday talk, the superimposition is the most important thing. If you understand that, then you have understood the entire Veda. You have understood all the koshas. Because it is this. The, so you, now you understand uh, the, the enjoyership, the doership. Then you have the uh, mind, which is uh, feeling emotions. And beyond that, now then you come to the pranamaya and then the 
unaware. Yes, but all these are being, uh, all these are there. I uh, know uh, these things will happen only if uh, the Atma is there. If not, then it will never happen. That's the body will be, will Unless that Atma is there, which is beyond the five koshas, and it is this Atma which first reflects the I thought when I wake up. Yeah. And from that I thought, the, the waker I then becomes the, 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 the doer I, the enjoyer I. Okay, okay. It, it's profound. So, uh, okay, okay. Appreciate, appreciate. Thank you. Appreciate. Okay, Shama is saying, uh, it, uh, okay, this, uh, Vijay is asking something. Uh, Shama, can you explain to me what you want? Yeah. Uh, a, of course, is the first question is, the way it seems like this third chapter of uh, Panchadasi, where we are discussing the uh, Panchakosha Viveka, yeah, yeah, uh, it actually, um, would it be fair to say that it is, you know, every spiritual uh, seeker goes through three different stages. One is where we are just content to live in that dual state, Dvaita. Yes. Then we come to Vishishta Dvaita, and then yes. finally, on realization, we are into that oneness phase or the Advaita, where only there is Perfect. one, there is no second. Yeah. Yes. Now yes. this uh, uh, the analysis of the Panchakosha seems to me that it is almost an interface. It's sitting in between the Dvaitam on one side and the uh, Advaitam on the other. So through, yes. uh, yeah, so it's, it looks like it's sitting right in the middle. Yes. As an interface. That's correct. Yeah. Your, your understanding so, is correct. Yes. Yeah. So that's one point. The yeah. second point, which I wanted a clarification was, you know, this uh, Priya more than Pramoda, and it says Ishta Darshanam and Ishta Bhava or, you know, Moda. So when you obtain it, when you can see it, when you can obtain it, and when you are completely experiencing it, so yes. these are the three levels of the Ananda. And Maya Kosha. The yes. Ananda Maya Kosha. Now, the question here is the Ishta Shabda, which is being used here, is it relating to simply the desired object? Yes. Which uh, it's not relating to the Ishta, you know, we do the worship. Ishta. No, 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 it is not the Ishta Devata. No. no, no, no. Here we are talking about the happiness which is born out of the sense objects. It could be, for example, if I'm uh, listening to a great talk. That yeah, yeah. The, that's correct. Yeah? Yeah. That's or correct. Any, any, any object which yeah. I am. Yeah. Correct. You see, suppose okay. you come to hear about that talk. That yes. is the first stage, Priya. Yeah. You just heard that there's going to be a nice talk. Mm. Then the talk has just started. Yeah. You know, then you, that is the, it becomes the moda state. Okay. And then you are right now in the middle of the talk. You are become yeah. one with the talk, and you have lost yeah. that uh, that other all other bhavas you have got rid of. Okay. Then Excellent. that is the pramoda. Excellent. So I just wanted that. To yeah. So this each one of us, you, you know, in our day to day life, we can easily ex uh, see this priya moda pramoda priya moda pramoda and, happening. And the, and the Ishta just relates to whatever may be the desired object. Correct. Yeah? Yes, that's okay. right. Perfect. Thank you very much. And the last this thing uh, uh, query which I have is um, when we are talking about the intellect or the buddhi, which is actually governing our emotions, our uh, the all the chanchalatvam and the doubts, everything, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it is governing this. Yes. What I want to know is what are the, what enables the buddhi? For example, why is it that sometimes it is almost like there is nothing in between? You know, you see it so clearly, like your talk, for example. Yeah. I can completely, without any problems, I can completely be immersed inside it. And there yes. are other times, and it's not because I, can't understand the language or whatever, but at other times I am not able to. In other words, yes. there is a change, there is a difference in perhaps the attention. Yes. And yeah, and what, what so what are the enabling 
and what are the disabling uh, factors? I'm just asking, which is yeah, see, not part of the talk. Correct. You see, what happens is our entire experiences which we have, mm. you should always remember there is a law of prarabdha karma. Whether it is a, a, a laukika or alaukika, whether it is Vedic or whether it is meditational, whether it is at the experience at the thought level, experience at the physical level, all experiences are governed by one factor called as prarabdha karma. Okay, that is the general rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, on which the thoughts will come and the thoughts will go. Okay. So you have certain pockets of time when your thoughts are very clear, mm. which means your prarabdha karma is helping you to have a clarity in your thought level at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are certain pockets of time when you want to be clear, but you are not able to be clear because your thoughts are being bombarded from all corners. I should do this, I should do that, I should do this, but I'm not able to focus on even one thing. You know, because at that time, what you feel, what you are uh, feeling is, I'm just exhausted with so many things in my life. You know, so you, you that is because of your your prarabdha karma. It is bombarding you with your with 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 your uh, desires. So many desires you have. It could be desires. It could be certain uh, uh, certain things which have not happened in life. Those anything can happen because the mind is extremely subtle. Or, or, subtle. or, or for example, questions in the current setup. Yeah. You know, I know for a fact, for the life of me, there is nothing, nothing. I know it's a fact. There, I know there is nothing that I can do to change the shape of things, yes. which is the Ukraine-Russian uh, uh, yes. uh, crisis. Correct. I know I cannot do it yet um and i'm trying not even to actually uh, read the news watch the news but even although i don't do all of that part of my mind i i just feel um, it is, it is it's yeah. madness that i know that, and i've told myself this is human history that yes. if there are two brothers they will fight for a piece of land yeah. for a piece of property Correct. so this is really an example. So I've explained all that to myself and to expect anything else is the greatest, biggest delusion uh, anyone can have, you know, that humans will not fight, humans yeah. will not have war. It is the very nature of the human mind where it will always have those uh, shadvikaras, you know, those six Shadvikara, yeah. Maya, Kama, Krodha, Madha, Loba, all of them. And it's very easy to intellectually understand it, yeah? Intellectually, I can understand uh, what is happening. However, at an affect level, at a feeling level, emotion level, I'm not able to resolve it. It's just too painful, even a small short image of what I might have seen. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying is that although I'm not consciously, I'm engaged in my studies and doing my, you know. Your sadhanas uh, and so sadhana on. Sadhana and all that. Correct. But part of our mind is somewhere else. Yes, that's because of the vasana of what has been seen. You see, two months ago, three months ago, there was no war. It was only COVID, COVID, COVID. Yeah. For two years, my mind was bombarded with COVID. Mm. There was no uh, Ukraine war or anything. No which Ukraine we, war has come. Which I but feel was less disabling. Was yes. less disabling because so, it was so, prakriti. It was prakriti. It yes. was in the nature. You know, it's an organism. Yes. The humans, I still find it difficult to accept that they are also part of jada. They are also part of prakriti. You know, yeah. and it is just as like what everything will happen. Nature, something will burn. Something will flower. Something will bloom. I am unable to accept that humans whom I consider as intelligent beings that they can actually do this in yeah. this present 21st day century is somehow just doesn't accept it you know no I agree uh, Shama it's not easy like they were the, the same the impact which COVID had on the human mind it is the same which is happening now it's another 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 topic you see now but one question you should always ask yourself mm. 
do i think of you see you want to get rid of it the one the one way you can try to get rid of it is in my sleep state was the ukraine war there no i was not at all identified with my mind that's all my mind is identified with the sense organs and then it is it is it is it is taking all the experience of the sense organs and then it is remembering it that's all i i don't know probably there is something going on because i'm just relatively getting up a bit more tired than my normal and yeah. so i i i don't know it, it is it is because of the bombardment in the tv and in the social media yeah. you see the social anyway, media anyway i'm sorry this is too much of a distraction to talk about but uh, i i thought i just wanted to share just in case others okay. are also feeling the same way yeah anyway thank you for sharing it uh, uh, shama it is it's a common thing we it's, all are facing it is again it seems like it's going on in different layers yes. you know so thoughts are one thing emotions are another thing you know so even although you might intellectually analyze the thoughts yeah. you still can have the power to go past your emotions okay yeah yeah vijay you had a question are you still around uh hari om shekhar ji i'm around but i think i'm being mindful of the time i'll call you <laughs> no 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 it's okay you can still ask me your question what's your question i know my yes. my question is when we say the the word which is called abhyantara means which is between antara yes. is inside and between within actually the the nature of atman is all pervading i think yeah. we really need to understand it a little more deeper as to atma not getting encased localized but it being adhishtana it actually the source of chaitanya Yes, uh, and that actually funds it, it transfers that to another Maya, and then downwardly to Vijnana Maya, Mano Maya. Correct, Kadamaya. that's right. Yes, that's one aspect. I thought I'll just clarify yeah, yeah, for the that's second. Yeah, that's correct. It's 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 a good it's a good understanding. Clear. Yeah. And the second question is the difference between the Atman and Ananda Maya Kosha. I think that was what I was thinking about. Yes, is that the Ananda Maya has both the Bhava Bhava Vritti. Yes, uh, yes, when it is especially in the sleep mode and. Uh, i know i know concept the other one is i, I slept know. but i but i don't know correct i yes. know that i slept happily but i don't know yeah bhava bhava vritti yes bhava bhava vritti comes yes and you also explain that that the, the because the once there is a bhava bhava vritti that means every vritti will have the, the drik drishya there is an experience yes. there is experience correct so there is an objective experience of priya moda pramoda yes Uh, because there is an experience and experiencer whereas atma atman is when you said beyond bhava bhava yes that, that means there, since there is no experience uh, why because there is no experience so yes. that is what i just thought i'll clarify no that's good because it is beyond triputi yeah that's right yeah okay so that's once right. you once you have crossed the triputi you are already in the lap of atma that's it you see there is no more thinking nothing in the meditation even in meditation now why meditation even in your normal waking hours you can be without the triputi even in your normal waking hours and just be with yourself it's possible it's only you see your mind has to click that uh, 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 triputi less state and then remember that state in the waking that's all it's like taking a picture of a non uh, of yourself without the uh, body and without the mind and without the world suppose your mind is able to click that picture and that picture is the nature of atma yeah that is your real picture that is your real self that is what is and then then you can always uh, you any time you can just uh, have a have a, just recall oh that is my real nature that's it You see, then you that that is what is called as abiding in Atma. And the more your mind learns to abide in that Atma, your Brahmacara Vritti. That is what is called as Brahmacara Vritti. That Vritti becomes that becomes stronger and stronger as you dwell more and more on that Vritti, on that uh, on that picture which I said. so what happens is your samsara vritti becomes less and less powerful to disturb you and your akhandakara vritti that pure homogeneous vritti becomes more stronger 
and you are able to abide in it more and more. So much so, it can give you moksha. That is what is the ultimate moksha. The moment you are that vasana, that is what is called as brahmakara vasana, you know. Once that becomes stronger, that all other vasanas will drop by themselves and that is what is called as jivan mukti. You have given me the answer today. <laughs> the yeah, anti, a, yeah, it's a two-step approach. Yeah. Antidote prescription. Antidote. <laughs> so if there true. is something which is disturbing you, you negate that and superimpose yes. something else. You yes, know, the picture right. of the pure Atman. Yes. Yeah. That is that that is that is the antidote. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Good questions, uh, Vijay. Very, very deep. And thank you for all the chantings which you are doing for the uh, for these uh, classes. So, three, two, three weeks you will have to finish the best, uh, rest of the chanting from the eleventh verse to the end of the chapter. Vijay, sure, sure. yeah. can you show us your face, please? Appreciate you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> see, you but they want to see. They want to see oh, my. Oh, this is Vijaya because I got confused. Thank you. Thank you. Vijaya and Melati. Okay, appreciate. Okay, nice to see you, Vijaya. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, bolo. Uh, bolo uh, I'm still confused uh, with uh, this. Uh, who is the doer and who is the enjoyer? Ah, the doer is the intellect, buddhi. Like, huh? See, uh, we all have something called as a mind. The mind is the one which is feeling, you know, which is uh, always having emotions. You see, emotions means I want, I have love, I love my grandchildren, I uh, I love my son. Now these are all emotions, which means uh, I like it, you know. So I like certain food. I like pav bhaji. All this is emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, what is buddhi? What is intellect? Intellect is the doer. Doer means what? Doer is something which will say, I am, the, uh, uh, I am going to join the class today. That is the doer. That is the intellect. Okay? Mm -hmm. When your mind is with emotions, when you're when you are same, you see, we all the instrument is the same. See, the instrument is inside our body. God has given us this instrument called as the mind. I can use the mind and then I can have emotions of the world. That is a good thing. So it's, it's you see, we can use our mind correctly also. Then Sometimes this mind gets confused. It has a lot of doubts, confusions. Now, it, th that time, this intellect has to take charge. The moment intellect takes, takes charge of this mind, then what it says, then what happens is the doer function gets activated. Actually, the doer function gets activated the moment you wake your eyes. You know, the moment you get up in the morning, the doership starts. I have to go and brush my teeth. I have to go and walk. I have to go for a walk. I have to eat. All this is that that is what is called as doership. I. You see, the doership is there where it is not in the mind, it is in the buddhi. Mind is a one one part of that same instrument which is called as mind. Another part is called as the buddhi. Then there is the third part in the say of the same instrument. It is called as memory. Chitta. Chitta means what? When the chitta means all the, all the old memories come to me. What I did when I was five years old. I was with my parents. I was living in so and so place. All that. That is the third portion of the same instrument. Okay. And then the last instrument is the last portion is enjoyership. Bhokta. Mm -hmm. the, they say that the bhokta is the subtlest portion. It is the lowest, which is nearest to Atma. Whereas the memory is slightly above, whereas above that is the doer and above that is the mind with emotions. Mm -hmm. It is the same, same instrument at four different levels. Subtler, subtlest, gross, 
mm-hmm. and somewhere in between. Same so mind. Enjoy the right? book. Ha. So, uh, suppose you are enjoying a nice TV. At that time, you are not. Uh, you, you you are you are no law. You you are in, uh, using your sense organs not to be a doer. You are you are using it as a book at that time. Mm-hmm. You see, you are enjoying. Suppose you are using your tongue. You are enjoying good food. Mm-hmm. You know. So at that time, you are you, you, your same instrument can be used as a karta as well as the book. Bhukta. Karta and bhukta is the same. Same instrument. It is the same instrument. You know, because we don't know. This is a very subtle thing which is there. Uh, my eyes cannot see it, but I know it is there in my body. Mm, and you. the last thing is, you should know about all this. There is one thing which is called as sakshi. Mm. Unless that sakshi identifies with this body, then only this bhukta is born. Mm-hmm. Then only this karta is born. Mm-hmm. That sakshi is what I experience without the body and the mind in my sleep state. Who am I? I am that sakshi, mm-hmm. unidentified with the medium of the body. Only with the body I can see the Ukraine war. I can see the. I can hear the class. I can listen to good music. I can go to a temple and uh, pray to God. Only with the body instrument, with the sense organs. Mm-hmm. But who is the user of this body and the sense organs? It is this I. That I is the ego I. But that ego I is not my real nature. It is only a temporary thing. It, it, it was born. It, 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 that ego has taken this body. And if it is experiencing the joy and sorrow of this birth of this body, this ego has taken many, many bodies before also. I am no longer concerned with the body and its and its enjoyments and its experiences. Oh, the, all that I put into one big bag and I just keep it aside. Now I am thinking that Sakshi, where is that Sakshi? I want to discover that Sakshi because that is my real nature. Why am I bothered about this uh, Bhokta and uh, Akarta and uh, Annamai Kosha and all that? Let me just forget about all those. You understand, right? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, we have had a very long session today. I know I'm going for a holiday. I don't want to continue the session. And <laughs> Okay, it is a long session today. Uh, anybody else? That's all? No, I just, uh, while you were talking about Anandamaya Kosha, yes. I just remembered that the Anandamaya Kosha, as we progress spiritually, can uh, start from the Vishya Ananda, where we are enjoying only the objects of the yes. world. Then it actually goes to Kalananda, where we start enjoying very refined arts. Yes. You know, then Medhananda, intellectual things, which yes. we just enjoy so much. Bhajanananda, we enjoy the worship. Yes. And the final one is the Brahmananda. Yes. That is yeah. your absolute Ananda, which once your mind has... Then it had, doesn't change. It doesn't change because mind has had the taste of that Ananda. Yeah. And that comes only from the scriptures. Yeah. It is revealed that Brahmananda is revealed by the scriptures. That is why it is called as Pramanam. Yeah. It is not the physical eyes which is seeing it. It is not the tongue which is tasting that, but it is revealed by the scripture as self-luminous. Don't forget, it is self-luminous yeah. and self-existing. Swayam Jyoti. Swayam Jyoti. Never forget that because that is the ultimate which you should re- remember in your mind. I have now understood what the Veda wants to reveal to me. I thank the Mother Shruti I have fulfilled in my life, life's goals have been fulfilled and there is nothing more for me. Let my life carry on with whatever it wants to do. That is my Prarabdha Karma and that is, I lead the life of Prarabdha Karma, but I am enjoying Brahman. So this is the dual living which you have to continue after the Shruti has done its job. Let it
they do because that is the way life is mm. all the jeevan muktas they oh. didn't retire to the they they were living in the same samsara like you and me and they were jeevan muktas ramakrishna parmansa he was in the same uh, you know same place where he lived his all his life with his devotees but he was in the different plane and that plane was revealed by this shruti mother shruti had revealed okay so mm -hmm. so that is the trick of how to live as <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you and uh, see you all after 3 weeks um so if you have uh, if you have any questions keep them uh you can uh, you can uh, prepare your questions as you study whatever you are studying you can study and the most important thing is keep your personal study on don't drop it whether it is for 15 minutes a day whatever you are studying whichever scripture you have started studying keep the study on personal study is very important if you want to continue vedanta little bit little bit doesn't matter swadhyaya but uh, but the problem is sekaji i don't understand sanskrit as a problem don't worry the sanskrit word uh, meaning books uh, are available don't worry just take nirvana satkam you know there is a small book called as nirvana satkam name buddhi ahankara chittani naham you see there there are nine verses just take any bhagavad gita you have done uh, wow bhai you have done bhagavad gita all the chapters so you know just take the bhagavad gita and read doesn't matter one page a day ah one page one verse that's enough <laughs> thank you thank, thank you. you and good night so this saturday there is a, still a session yeah and more yeah Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night. Are you on? Thank you. Thank you.